Welcome. So I think we will get started. Looks like we have roughly um, everybody here. Um, <clears throat> let me, sorry, I'm still coming up. Oh, here we are. Just setting up my screen so I can see everyone. Um, so welcome to the uh, August edition of the Monthly Open Lineage Meeting. And so as a reminder, um, those calls are recorded. And, and so uh, beyond your best behavior, you'll be published on the YouTube channel um, <clears throat> for what that records all the Open Lineage Monthly Meeting. Um, and we start the meeting with a roll call. So I'll go, um, call people by name based on the order they show up on my screen uh, on Zoom. And so please uh, give a quick introduction, you know, um, your name, where you're working, what brings you here today. If you have a topic to add, we have a general discussion uh, section at the end. Um, so any topic that could be a question, that could be, uh, a bug fix that you need urgently fix that could be um, questions about contribution or that could be I just want to be a fly on the wall and uh, you know I don't have anything to contribute but I want to see what's happening uh, and it's fine as well. So I'll go over uh, the screen and so top left is Michael Robinson. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, yeah, Michael Robinson, community manager, um, and uh, here to take notes, talk a little bit about recent releases, and uh, give you an LFAI progress update. So second is me, uh, I'm Julian. I'm the lead for the Open Image Project. Um, and today I have a few announcements uh, to make that are exciting. <laughs> and that's it. Next on the screen is Maciej. Hello, I'm Maciej Buchowski. I'm a software engineer at Getting Data. And today I'll have an update on our new uh, integration in Airflow. All right. Um, hello, I'm on the engineering team at Astronomer. Um, looking forward to hear uh, the cool announcements today. And I have one um, one discussion point that I wanted to bring up if we have time. Um, next, I don't know if it's your name or if your username, uh, Halumba, or um, what's your hey, Harsh, Harsh. Harsh, right. So after you, oh yeah, right. You're Harsh. Yeah, last Sorry. name, Lumba. Lumba, yeah. yeah. I figured uh, that was a username and not your name. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I'm here from Upgrade team. It's a fintech firm. Um, uh, we started uh, enabling uh, lineage on our processes, few of our services. Um, uh, and I did some uh, work on Slack with, with everyone here, I think, with Michael, with Willy. They are very helpful. <laughs> um and yeah i'm excited to to hear about the new changes next is willie okay great uh hello everyone i'm willie i'm the project lead for marquez and also open lineage committer that's it um great to see everyone peter uh Hi, I'm Peter. Uh, I work at Astronomer. Uh, I am a Marquez contributor. Yeah. Shiri? Hello, I'm Shiri Cabral. I'm a product manager at Calibra, which makes data governance software and an all around advocate for open lineage when people say it's the best way to move lineage information around. I say open lineage. Love it. Ernie. Hi, Arnie Ostic at Mantis Software. We're a lineage vendor and we're a consumer of open lineage and we're evaluating emitting open lineage. So always great to be in these meetings. Exciting. Uh, next is Atitya. 
Uh, hey folks. So my name is Aditya. I'm from uh, Intuit India. So uh, part of the AI and data team uh, within Intuit. So just trying to evaluate and, you know, kind of stumbled across open lineage very recently. So have a very uh, close journey related to Harsh. So I've been, you know, posting a lot of queries in the last two weeks and, you know, trying to figure out what all it has to offer. So yeah, glad to meet the community. Welcome. Uh, Mandy. Hello, everybody. I'm Mandy Chessel. I'm the lead for the Algeria project and uh, very interested in open lineage since we our two projects have a very common aim, which is to enable different types of technology to emit different types of metadata, which includes in the agent standard ways. So this is a really important project for, for us. And that's why I'm, again, delighted to be on the call. Nice to have you. And last but not the least, uh, Corey. Hello, let me, there we go. Uh, I'm a Corey VC, Solutions Architect at AWS, and I'm interested in open lineage working with Apache Spark and AWS Glue. Um, I'm continuing to learn how the project team works together, and um, I'm also interested in networking within the uh, open lineage ecosystem. Thanks. Great, welcome. So, Next, uh, so just a quick reminder of the best place for communication in between those meetings. Uh, so if you want to uh, get invited to this meeting on your calendar, you can go to the Open Lineage slash meetings page uh, where you can get it on your calendar. Uh, you can join Slack. Slack is the best way to communicate in between those meetings. We have a mailing list where mostly it's announcements um, <laughs> about uh, new releases and such. The wiki will have the notes for this meeting, as well as links to a recording of all the meetings and the agendas and the slides. Uh, on Twitter, the LinkedIn group, the, you'll find announcements as well, mostly about new releases uh, and things to announce like upcoming talks and so on. The YouTube channel has all the recordings uh, for this meeting. And we also have a master zone account. Um, and so for the agenda today, I'll start with a few announcements. Uh, Michael will give the LFAI updates and talk about the recent releases. And then we'll have uh, Mache talk about the brand new Open Lineage provider in Airflow. And Pavel will give an update about the Open Lineage 1.0 release uh, that happened recently uh, to go more in details. And we finish by discussion items and open discussion. I think, uh, Harald, you had listed something in the discussion items. Um, and of course, anybody's welcome to add, uh, I think we have some times, so you're welcome to add your own discussion items if there's something you want to discuss. So I'll start with the announcements. And so uh, we have our ecosystem survey going out and we're trying to learn about how people consume, uh, produce open lineage, um, and <clears throat> and you know, help uh, set direction for and priority for new, new things. So you can go on bit.ly slash ecosystem underscore survey uh, and share this around you uh, in the open lineage community or insert it as well. So the big news is on uh, July 27, uh, we presented the open lineage project for graduation from the LFAI. Uh, and we got accepted by the uh, the TAC. And so, of course, now we become uh, voting members as well for the LFAI. So Michael uh, and Mandy are exerting this uh, for the project um, uh, today. And um, and this is big news. Right? So we're in the grown-ups uh, now, graduating from the LFAI. Uh, and since this is still, it's not been publicly announced yet. Um, I believe there's a block post uh, brewing, and uh, but it's coming soon. Uh, newsletter, our third issue of the newsletter, newsletter has shipped. Um, so you get a lot of uh, interesting information about upcoming talks, uh, releases, and other things about open lineage. Uh, you can uh, sign up to receive uh, the newsletter on the home page of Open Lineage and on the bit.ly slash capital O-L underscore news. 
The other big announcement, there are three meetups happening soon. Uh, there's going to be one in San Francisco at the end of the month. Um, uh, it's going to be an evening and we have a presentation from a member of the community on how they're using Open Lineage. Uh, please sign up, you, you'll find on the, on the blog a post uh, on the Open Lineage website to sign up for this. I'll be there, uh, sure a few other of you will be there. Um, in Toronto, uh, we're going to have a meetup to coincide with the Airflow Summit in September. Um, and something like more details uh, coming, that'd be another option if you're going to the Airflow Summit, you're cordially inv invited to talk about Open Lineage. Um, and in October, we'll have a Marquez meetup at the Astronomer HQ in San Francisco. So yeah, Julian. More. Yeah, go Julian, ahead. If I could just do a quick plug on that, if um, so, Marquez is also scheduled to uh, graduate. So there's a meeting that's happening shortly after the meetup. Um, so if you want to come by and just learn on how uh, open lineage is consumed by Marquez, or if you just want a sticker or pizza, or in general, just come say hi. If you know anyone in the area or is interested, uh, let them know. Okay, that's it. That's good. Any questions on those items? If you have question on the graduation, I believe uh, Michael will probably talk about it in a second. Yeah, uh, thank you, Julian. <clears throat> as uh, as Julian mentioned, we recently attended uh, the. Um, Technical Advisory Council meeting of the LFAI and, and Data Foundation, uh, which has been our host in uh, different ways for, gosh, a couple of years now. Um, going back before I joined, um, and so this would have been 2020, I believe, um, when the project joined the LFAI and Data, and. Um, so this has been a long time coming. Been very excited about this meeting because it represents the culmination of a lot of work and it represents the maturation of the project. Um, when you're voted to graduate by the uh, members of the TAC, I think it's a kind of seal of approval and a kind of endorsement uh, as far as um, the rigor of your security, um, the, uh, the amount of contributions you have, the size of your ecosystem and other factors as well. Um, so Julien presented, and these are the topics that he covered. Uh, we talked about adoption trends. Uh, we reviewed uh, our partnerships within the foundation and outside the foundation. And this was a kind of cradle to grave, so to speak, um, uh, framework. So uh, charting our progress in all these areas, including um, some, some pretty stringent technical requirements that we had to meet as part of the OSSF badge process. So we recently earned the gold badge there. I encourage you to check out um, those requirements. And there was a Q&A, and then, as mentioned, a successful vote. And I included here, just for your information, a couple slides. Um, so I initially put this one on, but it's the laziest one that I made, right? <laughs> Copying the star chart. Um, but we also collected uh, more meaningful data uh, going from when the project initially joined the LFAI and where we are now in terms of adoption, in terms of forks, in terms of commits and lines of code change, to give the TAC a picture of our growth. Um, so, uh, so it's exciting that we've reached this, uh, I think, important milestone. And what's coming um, in addition to having a seat on the TAC to approve um, other projects that want to join, 
and move through the process and eventually graduate. Uh, in addition to that, we have you know, marketing amplification and support, and we'll be rolling out some announcements on their side as well as our side. What we're waiting on um, is approval from our partners to, to make sure that we're able to mention them in those communications. So, uh, so that's the latest about the LFAI. Sorry, before I switch to the next topic, any questions? Great. Well, no questions, just incredible growth. Um, I mean, Marcus has benefited from the community, the open English community as well. So, you know, we, uh, on our end, you know, all we can say is just thank you for building such an amazing ecosystem around data lineage and Marquez being that implementation example that has allowed also our community to grow. So it was a great partnership throughout the years. And also just congrats to Mache. Like I know you're on the call, but Pavel and the whole team, like they they had a big, big factor in making making these numbers just look so great. And thank you all for being part of the community on the call. I know there's like a, a few of you have been uh, very active and big parts of this. Okay, everybody's shy. So I'll, 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 I'll just go to the next uh, slide. Okay, uh, so we had two uh, releases since our last meeting and I don't wanna go uh, too, too far into the weeds here. I just want to offer some highlights, starting with 1.0. Uh, this was something that was exciting because we've been working with our partners at Calibra and Manta on adding static lineage capability to the project. Um, and this process has been uh, going on for uh, like a quarter, I would say, a few months. And uh, We've been adding parts of it in a couple releases, and 1.0, you could say, is the culmination of this, uh, where we added um, 1997, uh, thanks to Kuba, um, which uh, kind of updated uh, the spec for a new JSON schema specification. Um, but that wasn't the only change in the release. Um, as always, I mean, I think it's safe to say there were uh, changes to the airflow integration. Mache, who's on the call, contributed a PR to Airflow uh, 2006 to help with coverage of the file entity uh, for backwards compatibility. Um, we had some changes there as well, one from a new contributor who might be very familiar actually to those who follow the Airflow project, uh, and uh, that's Caxel, um, who changed the log level from warning to debug to make the, the process a little bit easier on devs. And um, another change to Airflow uh, to ensure that the listener isn't failing tasks in some edge cases. So uh, thanks not only to those contributors, but also another new contributor with a bug fix, Mars Land. Um, and so that's 1.0. And we'll move on to a bigger release. That was the prior one, 30.1. Uh, there were changes across the project here. We added uh, merge into support to delta tables and iceberg tables, thanks to Pavel, as well as uh, support for when um, you've got output data sets using an iceberg table as a sync, it was in the Flink integration, added support for the iceberg rest catalog. That was thanks to a new contributor, Juan. Um, in Airflow, we added an option to use the direct execution method on the Airflow, Airflow listener when the existence of a non-SQL alchemy-based Airflow event mechanism is confirmed. And this applies to Airflow 2.6, 1.0, uh, 
or when a certain environment variable is used. Uh, in SQL, we added support for uh, Apple Silicon in uh, Open Lineage SQL Java, and we added um, facet deletion to the spec. This was part of 1.0, I believe. Uh, one of the contributions that contributed that was, was part of that, rather. And then we added a file transport to the client um using uh file transport and some config classes supporting append mode or write new file mode and that's useful when an object store doesn't support append mode as in the case of databricks dbfs fuse um, and that was from another new contributor uh alex so i want to uh, give a shout out to alex david j goss as well as one. Once again, there were other bug fixes. As always, uh, please check those out at the links. If you're curious, let us know if you have questions about any of these or other changes. So if there are no other questions, and move on to the next topic. Uh, so Machi is going to give an update on the Open Lineage provider in Airflow, which is a very big deal. So we moved all the logic of the Open Lineage Airflow integration into an Open Lineage provider, moving all Lineage uh, coverage built in in Airflow itself uh, for the Airflow side of things, which is going to make it a lot easier to maintain and increase. And yes, sorry, Matthew, I'm trying not to. I should stop talking and let you uh, talk about it. Yeah, so can you move to the next slide? So first of all, it's released. So uh, great, uh, we are, are happy about it, but you can't use it yet, sorry. So the issue is that the release is compatible only with Airflow 2.7, and Airflow 2.7 isn't yet released. So our provider depends on some small but meaningful changes into Airflow core. Uh, so we can wait a week or two. I think that's the actual timeline right now for Airflow, uh, something close to that. And in 2.7, like if you want to use uh, Open Lineage with Airflow, the recommended process would be to install this provider instead of Open Lineage Airflow library uh, that is used right now and will be used for uh, lower versions of Airflow. So, uh, Regarding that, can I get next slide? Uh, development, as Julian said, is happening right, right now in Airflow repo. So as we can see, we have merged a lot of uh, PRs. This is like filtering by label. So you can see some are still open. We're working on next ones and you know expanding the coverage, expanding what we can do there. And uh, yeah. So what's in there? Uh, we cover like uh, not every, I have to say, not every operator that we covered in open Lineage Airflow yet, uh, but we are working to you know, include them in the next trees, maybe because some of them are quite large and uh, still this will be fixed, but uh, the majority of those extractors are covered right now in the, Airflow operators itself. And this, this means that any change to the operator uh, will be tested right now against those uh, lineage methods. And then if you know somebody breaks open lineage uh, by changing the operator in a way that was not compatible with it, the you know he will have to fix it ready. So the lineage just you know got more stable uh, and it's also more easy to contribute for other people. So uh, we have you know, a lot of SQL rated operators, which are very popular. We have uh, GCP ones that also like um, are very popular and uh, differ slightly from the regular SQL ones. Uh, SageMaker, FTP, SFTP, and basic support for Python and Bash operators. Why basic? Because of something I'll talk in a minute. Uh, and uh, I think I copied too much from the other slide. 
and this next two lines should be there. So what we're going to do still, we are going to add more operators, of course. And some there are some you know BigQuery operators, some transport operators, which Airflow has a lot, uh, which basically just copy data from point to point. But this is obviously a lineage generating operation. Uh, more S3 support. And something that is, I called, I invented the term when writing the slides, uh, XCOM native operators. So there are some that operate on, uh, like in this case, the BigQuery data operator just gets data from BigQuery and puts it into XCOM, when, where it can be used by other operators, especially uh, Python operator, which can process the data using like whatever code user defines. And uh, so I maybe I'll talk, oh, or I can continue now. So the idea is that the data sets will be represented as open image data sets there. Uh, the XCOMs will be represented in this way. And then if you refer to this data set in Python operator, uh, it will be treated as reading the, the actual data set itself. So uh, then we won't get like split lineage between one operator read the data and the second operator wrote the data somewhere. And between was this missing X coming. So we're aiming to get this fixed. And this is not like a promise that, hey, next release we'll have something. Uh, this is open source uh, software development. And this means like any, any code we write is uh, it needs to be reviewed by other members of the community. Uh, so, and then the Apache release process uh, with voting by PMCs. So uh, this is not something that I can promise will happen next week or month from now. Uh, and we want to add also some things which I said core because I think they might need to wait for mm, Airflow release itself, but might not. It depends on development, right? What we find. Uh, so we want to add interfaces around open image implementing operators. And this is basically the idea around this is making it easier to contribute open lineage support for people. So right now, uh, I won't say it's hard, but it's not obvious how to add the methods to the operator. And this will mean that you have to mark the operator and then the actual code will be there. Uh, so, and the second is this data set support, since maybe we'll need some core changes with XCOM. This is more uh, advanced support. And the third one is hook level linear support, which kind of will look similar to what I said about Python operator, or at least what we want to be. And this means that if you use Python operator, which generally uses any code you want, uh, you can use Airflow hooks to read, write data and transform it. And inside those hooks, we will capture the actual operations. And then at the end, uh, the Airflow will capture the change, uh, the changes made by those hooks and expose it as its own lineage. So uh, this means you can like in one operator read data from BigQuery and send it to Snowflake, because why not? And this will get captured as an open event. Uh, and this also like, this doesn't mean we support uh, all and, and the code you can write, but those using uh, Airflow hooks. And yeah. If anyone has some questions or proposals or you know other things to add to this list, and then we'll have, we'll be happy to hear from you here on or on Slack or in GitHub issues. Well, for the XCOM dataset support, it sounds like we need to add like this XCOM to the uh, dataset naming convention, right? Like if we yes. have like a standard naming like for those, then you can capture all that lineage. Actually, this is a great. Maybe uh, because so. like XCOM has uh, different backends, right? So mm. uh, if you use something like S3 backend, I think we want to use like S3. Name That's it, correct. Right? Yeah. But 
uh, this needs more development. It's just I just indicated the direction that we will definitely look into. Makes sense. That's it. Any question? I had one. Um, also, really great to see hook level lineage support because I think what we do see in the wild is there is a lot of use of Python operators. So it's very hard to extract um, metadata from just the code itself. Uh, I do have just a general question on uh, sort of moving the, moving the project over to Airflow and maybe going into the importance of maintaining and the implementation of those operators. Like maybe what are some of the benefits of moving a lot of this code over? Uh, first uh, benefit is that the lineage extraction is tied to the version of the operator. So uh, if you want to like break something internally in operator that is purely an implementation detail of this operator, previously we could look at some property like this and uh, you know try to extract data from it. And then the, it got renamed, for example, and we have to check for both names, right? And, and right now, when you change the name, you can change the uh, extraction logic of lineage. And the previous version will work the same because it's named the same in the previous version, and the new one will get uh, gets new version, right? So this means, and third one is that, you know, this tested along the way. So first, you didn't know that you broke anything with lineage, and you don't have to know because it wasn't part of the contract. Right, right now we have tests that confirm that you know lineage is well extracted. Uh, another benefit I would say is that this development progresses along the operator development. So anyone can add new operator to Airflow and add the lineage extraction in the same moment, uh, in the same place. Um, yeah, for for open lineage, uh, it's important to have greater visibility, right? Uh, also, some things couldn't happen without uh, moving it to Airflow, without being able to change Airflow itself, uh, like this hook, lineage, uh, hook level lineage support, right? So our previous integration could not uh, extract any data from there because it's like an opaque, like using hooks is an opaque Python operation, right? We, we, we can do insane things like parse the, uh, basically the source code, <laughs> get the hook and, you know, it's it's impossible. Right now we can uh, annotate hooks to capture what are they doing, right? And this is change that can't be monkey patched. Uh, if you want to be sane after the operation, uh, you have to uh, be able to write code in Nerflow project as well. So I think there are like giant list of uh, improvements uh, that are you know uh, achieved by moving to airflow itself and this is you know in line with i think original version uh, uh, ideology of open lineage that producers expose lineage themselves uh, I think the, so, uh, uh, the main was ready okay great that, right. uh, thanks for sharing Martin. thank you so on that, we'll pass it on to Pavel. Actually, wait a minute. Pavel. Pavel, Pavel is not... has recorded. Oh, yeah. yes, recording. Okay. So, which match are you playing the recording? Which uh, you there? are. I think there is an oh, yeah. third. Next. If you want to say you don't need to. here, right? Oh, Let's here. Just one. Oh, here we go. Okay. Just going to mention to Michael he was not the other Michael. He was not on. We can't hear Julian. 
Julian, you might have to reshare it with the audio. Oh, okay. Um, sorry, last time. Uh, video here. Oh, okay. Not this. Uh, Michael, do you want to do it? You did it last time and you know how to do it. Yeah, let me let me try. Sorry, I should have. I have not done this before. I'll share some. Okay. Um, Let's see. Um, let's see if I just do it from here. Hello, everyone. That works. For being here. Uh, sorry for not being here. Um, I mean, it's a great meeting, I believe, because you know it's one that you release. And uh, I'm super happy uh, to be able to share some of the things related to one that I'll release. So one, one of the previous slides, Michael, uh, has shown one that is a release and the changes related to it. But actually, it's not all that I think it's worth uh, being described. So, uh, you know, we didn't want to do the big bang to put a lot of changes aside and then merge them at once to make one that I'll release. Uh, we didn't want to do it because we we're afraid, you know, of them uh, fixing and debugging uh, a situation where a lot of things were changed at the same time. So instead, we had a list of things that we wanted to be ready with, and we went the agile way one, one, one by one with those lists. This, and once it was done, we said, "Hey, it's one that's your release." So it's worth having a five minutes to step back and. Uh, refresh on what's been done uh, from that list. And uh, I prepared uh, a slide of just six stars, which I think are the most uh, important for one that I released. And it starts with uh, 1839, which is Julian's proposal to add a static lineage. Um, uh, yeah, so I mean, what's the static lineage? What's the static metadata? So, so far, open lineage was uh, run centric. It contained only run events, which had information on the run, on the job. It had information also on some static metadata, like what are the data sets, what are the input, output data sets, what the schema of the data sets, the code version, and so on. But it didn't have enough flexibility to give an option to a user to just send static metadata, like, for example, uh, to define the data set owner or marking a data set as containing personal identifying information. It was run-centric in a way that uh, around the regulatory element of the open image. And uh, so this proposal uh, says, how do we want to achieve the goal? And after the proposal, there was another PR 1880, looks like a 19th century history. Uh, 1880, uh, which uh, I had was lucky to work with, which implemented this. And so uh, there was one tricky thing here. So the tricky thing here was that we wanted to stay backward compatible. So we have an Open lineage schema that defines what's allowed, describes run events, and we wanted to extend it so that uh, it supports data set event, job events, so just some static metadata information uh, without changing the existing run events so much and without adding different schemas because we wanted to have a single endpoint that is able to consume open lineage events unrelated, uh, regardless of whether it's that was a job for one event which already existed. So this has been done within this PR. 
And actually, you know, we can read the code together. It's a great story. Uh, but the most interesting thing is the line here, those two lines which say, hey, from now on, not only we accept the run event, but we also accept one of the run event, data set event, and job event. And with this PR, uh, we have modified the clients, the Python client, the Java client. Uh, we've also modified some transport within opening the Java client uh, to be able to produce such data. And, uh, and uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, this is going to work on the backend. Oh, you may ask, was how then how, how did we decide to distinguish those events? So actually, we decided to rely on an existing schema URL field. Uh, if a schema URL field points to a deficit event or job event, it means these are there those kinds of events. And if it's something we don't understand, we assume it's still the right event. And this is cool because actually this lets the existing user. So you know. One of the main purposes, let's assume the majority of users is not interested in static metadata. And uh, if they don't want to send it, uh, let's make it in a way there is no change for them. Uh, so uh, such an approach let us, you know, achieve it goal. So if you're not interested in static metadata, you don't have to bother. If you are interested, uh, keep in mind to have a schema URL field within your events to point directly to, to the event types that you want to send. And the next issue and the next PR was Mark has the ability to store uh, to decode uh, metadata events. Um, yeah, so, you know, we made the client changes and we want to make sure that this is going to work on the backend side on uh, Mark has and other clients. And you know, one of the issues here is that Marquez has relational database that uh, I think with over a half of the tables have a column run ID, which is a foreign the run table. So it's kind of so run centric that uh, it's really hard to implement uh, the events that don't have run ID within it. So, so I mean, we found it uh, the expensive task and to, uh, we wanted to go fast to, you know, enable others uh to make use of this feature so we decided that we'll just implement the uh within the jackson ability to decode the json so that you know it distinguishes which type of event it is because this will make sure that uh, our main assumptions are correct so that you know the open linux map is correct it's ready to produce and to consume the event so uh, within this PR, we don't touch the database, we don't make any changes. We've just written the event type resolver that based on the uh, schema URL to decides which uh, type of uh, Java class should uh, be deserialized and uh, Jackson does everything for us. So this made us sure, okay, the approach we are taking is okay, we can proceed with that. Uh, the one later in turn out, there is still a tiny feature missing. It's a facet deletion. So imagine you've sent some ownership pass yesterday and you would like to delete it. And you know, with the current model, it's not doable. And this one of the PRs I like the most because yeah, it's also by Julian. And the other thing is that you know it contains the proposal and the solution uh, and everything in a single PR. Yeah, it's self-contained. So, um, so the proposal here is that no matter what type of puzzle you have, uh, later on, you can send it with a property deleted and the puzzle can only have the single property. It will be all totally fine. And this will mean to the backend hey, let's delete this property. Uh, so this is another feature that was added. Uh, the next one to go is 1997 from Yakub, uh, which uh, got some cleaning within our open and JSON schema. So we had a bug, we had a, uh, um, we had a situation where our schema was referencing composite schemas, and this reference was uh, referencing uh, a local file. And for us, I mean, it looked clear what it means. 
Um, but there are a lot of useful uh, standard tools that uh, are able to validate if a JSON is valid against some defined schema. And for those reduced tools, uh, the schema we had was invalid because it used some references to that were not understood. And uh, it was a big blocker, but uh, we really wanted to, you know, fix it before 1.0 release. Uh, the last thing that's on my list is uh, some clarification on the run event uh, lifecycle. So there were some, so it's something that resulted in a documentation and first it took a discussion. And the important takeaways of this are that complete, abort, and fail are the terminal state, which, which means if you are consuming the events specific to some run ID, if you get one of those, it means you are done with the run ID. There will be no other events related to this run ID. And so it's something worth putting in your docs to help others implement the consumers. That's the one thing. Uh, the other uh, interesting question was why do we have other and running states? How was the difference between them? Uh, and the point here is that uh, we assume that running has to be after start and before terminal state, but other is allowed to be before start. So, um, you know, imagine a scenario when someone's requesting some resources to start a job. So the job isn't starting before the resources are acquired and still, uh, and now some event won't, so, an event has to be emitted that the resources were requested. And for that purpose, we would like to keep the other state. Additionally, you know, I think in future there will be more and more integration to open image and having other is like a cool option to allow uh, I think that's the end. Maybe it cut off. Okay. Any question on this? I love to be the favorite PR of uh, Pavel. So, of course, there's been a lot of work going in there. Um, and we're really looking forward to feedback on the static lineage part. I'm sure there are people on the call who are interested in this. And so this is just the beginning. Yeah. So, and, yeah, go ahead. And maybe, maybe Julian, like I'm going to, so as, as Pavel mentioned, there, there was a PR to support ingestion of static lineage in Marquez, but the discussion, as he pointed out, we didn't want to rush it because the run ID is such a core, um, relationship that we have within all of our tables. So I just posted uh, a link to the issue that really says that we need to propose a uh, design uh, to support static level lineage. So if there's anyone on the call that's interested on the consumption side on how we might go about processing static lineage, please chime in. Uh, there's a proposal coming out um, that I need to work on, but we're gonna get there. And if you want to be involved in the discussion, feel free uh, to chime in on the issue. Sounds good. And that's issue 2544 on the Marcus project. Nice. It would be in the, in the notes. So on that, we have a few minutes to finish with the discussion item. So. Harrell had mentioned that, uh, or maybe Harrell, you want to ask a question? And I'm sure there's a couple of people I can think of on this call that we have opinions on this. Sure, sure. Um, so yeah, basically my my question is more to kind of people integrating Opal Lineage and maybe also Marquez, trying to figure out what are people doing for their integration tests? Um, how do people validate the quality? of you know the lineage extraction as open lineage moves up in versions or as the things that we're trying to instrument change in versions um 
as well as you know how you're ingesting the lineage, if you're using Marquez or if you're using another backend, uh, what sort of integration tests you're running. This is especially interesting because you know on on the open source side we do like the the open source projects does provide some level of integration tests, but we obviously can't account to writing all the different like combinations of tools in the ecosystem because I don't think we have the compute uh, power <laughs> to, to cover all of those, but kind of wanting to open up the question to see what people are doing and figure out if there's something we could offer up centrally to support um, people's efforts there. I can talk a bit about Nigeria's um, work. So when we, um, we, we support both inbound it, um, open lineage events as well as producing them for um, our own workflow engine um, and it is also possible to sort of have the open lineage events come through Nigeria, us augment them with additional information and then push them out so they can be pushed out to different destinations and one of them is Marquez so basically, if if an open lineage, so I, I went through the open lineage site and pulled all the sample JSON files of different types of messages, and that was extremely helpful. So one of the things that really helps us with our testing is test data from all the different types of input so that we can pick it up and, and try it without having to have the engine running um, to produce the open lineage events. So that was step one. <laughs> um, and... Um, so, so we use Marquez as, as the, basically the gold standard. If, if whatever we're producing or whatever's passing through the Algeria runtime is acceptable at the other end to Marquez, then that's, that's, how we, that's how we test. We also have a Postman collection with a number of very simple um, open lineage events. So that allows us to post different types of events to Algeria and see how it relaxes. That's more of a unit test type level. Did that, did that help? Yeah, definitely, Mandy. Um, thank you. Uh, are you also looking at certain things that you expect to be extracted uh, from events? So, for example, you know, the certain properties or certain facets. Um, yeah, that's 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 where that's that's where we struggle because a lot of these runtimes we actually don't have access to, which is why we rely on the sample events um, that you supply. So. The bigger range of sample events that come, because um, that you know that that are available for our testing, the more we can test. But what we don't know is, you know, whether that was a good message from <laughs> from Spark or Airflow or whatever. That that's actually, um, I don't know enough about those runtimes to um, assess whether we're getting the right information out of those engines. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because. Uh... My follow-up question to that was, what if, what if Marquez provided the ability to just like drop um, these validator classes that are more implemented by the end user, and Marquez won't necessarily, it would just have this interface that you can do validation as events are coming in, but it's more custom code that can be added to the project. Um, anyway, it's something we thought about. Mm -hmm. was going to ask Ernie if he had uh, something to add, but I think he had to go. Well, same. All right, we can continue this uh, in the next meeting if more people uh, show up. And, and I, I think this is okay. I, this is going to be an ongoing effort to make this better. Well, well, in, I can't give you an exact promise on when we'll do it, but we will be updating Ajiria for this to put in the static lineage support. And so maybe when I've done that, I can do a demonstration on this call, maybe, probably not next month, but maybe the month after. And then we can, I can show you how, how we do the validation and, uh, and show the, the sort of testing we do. That'd be great. Yeah, I think it's an important, so today we don't have a lot of time to discuss it. I think it's an important topic. And we should follow up. I know, I know we talked in the past about you know validation suites and things like that. And 
there's not a lot of progress that has been done yet. And I think it's important that we spend a bit more time on that uh, as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be it for today, but we'll uh, resume this topic. So uh, we can, uh, Mandy, we can, you can be on the agenda for presenting next time and we can talk further. About yeah, may, maybe not next month, but the month after. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah. See how, it, I'll let you know to see how I'm doing. If it goes in really easily, then it might be next month, but uh, we'll see. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and uh, see you on Slack in between. Yeah, <laughs> later. <laughs>